A full day of music, food, and fun helped the Daisy Project make the world a more accessible place for those with special needs. Canterbury Village celebrated its 30th anniversary with a guided tour of its historic buildings and grounds. A horde of zombies were seen wandering the streets of downtown Lake Orion during the 10th annual Zombie Walk. And the Lake Orion Dragons began their season with three consecutive wins. Could they keep their unbeaten streak alive against the visiting West Bloomfield Lakers? We'll have the highlights coming up. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. We'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. The DAISY Project exists to help enrich the lives of families and individuals with special needs by making the world more accessible. Recently, the organization held its largest fundraiser of the year right here in Orion Township. On Saturday, September 16th, Orion Township's Wildwood Amphitheater was the site of Ella Palooza 2023. Now in its ninth year, visitors enjoyed a full day of music from a wide variety of genres as well as food and refreshments. Vendors were set up throughout the grounds and Motor City Cornhole returned to host a tournament at the event. Ella Palooza helps the DAISY Project with their mission of making Oregon Township and neighboring communities a more accessible place for those with special needs. Today we are here for Ella Palooza, which is the annual fundraiser for the DAISY Project. We've got live bands playing all day, we've got a beer tent, we've got activities for kids, we've got a cornhole tournament. And as you can hear, there's live bands going on all day. Uh, we got great local talent playing uh, from rock to folk to funk to uh, 80s rock cover band, um, country, all sorts of music. And the money is all going back into the community for to make recreational spaces more accessible for people with special needs. And the atmosphere here today has been fantastic. The weather has been super cooperative. It's been gorgeous and it's been lots of fun. Everybody's having a great time hanging out on the hill here at uh, Wildwood Amphitheater. Seven bands and soloists performed throughout the day, including One Ton Trolley, Sadie Bass, and Sunset Boulevard. Oxford native Ava Swiss appeared on the 17th season of America's Got Talent in 2022 and reached the semifinals. She was one of the performers who lent her talents to help the cause. Oh, it's better. First of all, it's for a fundraiser and I always love supporting local fundraisers, but also just Lake Orion and Oxford and this whole area in general has been so supportive to me, so I just, anytime I can give back, I really like to do that. I, my heart just is full to know that there's people who care so much to put things like this together, you know, to support others, so it's just really filled my heart. It means the world to us that, you know, so many people want to be here and be part of this. And I mean, the talent in this area is just incredible. I mean, we got such amazing local talent um, here. And Ava, just what a, what a voice that girl has. I mean, you could not have asked for a more beautiful voice uh, and a more beautiful talent to be here with us today. Money raised at the event will help the DAISY Project with their current priority of placing adult changing tables in public areas and rest stops. Of course, it's not too late to donate to the cause. You can visit daisyprojectmi.com to make a donation today. Beginning in 1916, publishing heir William E. Scripps acquired almost 4,000 acres of land for his Wildwood farm. Scripps raised cattle, dairy cows, sheep, swine, and draft horses on the grounds and also created a wildlife sanctuary. Following his death in 1952, the property was divided and sold with guest house purchasing the Scripps mansion and surrounding grounds, while 21 acres became what is now known as Canterbury Village. In 1967, businessman Howard Keatington Jr. bought the property and opened Keatington's Antique Village. The village closed in the 1980s and sat neglected for years until the property was purchased by Stan Aldridge in 1991. The owner of Indian Wood Golf and Country Club, two years later, Canterbury Village opened to the public. On Saturday, September 16th, families were invited to celebrate the attraction's 30th anniversary. About two years of uh, heavy construction and uh, then obviously there were some additions after 
restaurant opened up in 95. The uh, 80,000 square feet addition to the uh, Christmas store opened up in 98. Um, so obviously it was a work in progress. Just a fun place for families to uh, come and enjoy uh, time together. Um, I'm not really sure what his end vision was. Uh, he loved to build things and uh, obviously he loved Europe and he built himself really an English village uh, in, in beautiful Lake Orion. Families were encouraged to take a guided tour of the grounds, which features several original buildings that date back to Wildwood Farm and beyond. These colorful shops were once home to farm staff and management. The Hadrill House was built in the 1870s by the original settlers of the property and was the chauffeur's home during the Scripps era. In 2014, Yates Cider Mill moved into what was once the dairy barn. Other buildings were once hay barns, horse stables, and the farm firehouse, all of which have been lovingly restored and preserved for future generations to visit. He was a big uh, believer in restoring buildings. He did that down the, the street at Indianwood at the golf course that we uh, own in Lake Orion. And he did it here. And, uh, you know, people love the architecture and love to walk in and see the history. Today we have all the uh, different signs out of what the buildings were uh, back the farm days and, and uh, Keatington days. So it's it's been a lot of fun. And then obviously buying my father out in 2020 and turning Canterbury into a family event center. It's been a fun project for me and my wife. King's Court Castle Restaurant was a later addition and opened its doors to the public in January of 1996. Stan Aldridge talked about his vision at the time. The restaurant was needed, sorely needed here. I mean, they're just absolutely needed. There's, there's just uh, the, the volume of people that visit the village. They, they come for, it's a destination festival village. And they come to eat and to, you know, to be entertained and to walk through and shop, and uh, the restaurant's an integral part of it, very important part. We should have done the restaurant first. Uh, we want the food to be good, we want them to enjoy that this is something that's unique to, to you know, Michigan and probably most of the Midwest. There's very few facilities like this anywhere in the country. It's a very unusual, uh, uh, different type of uh, restaurant and we, we want them to, to enjoy the food. The response on the food's been tremendous, tremendous. I mean, just absolutely tremendous. And, and uh, that's what we want. We want them to go away with a warm feeling about the whole village, you know. Stan Aldrich's son, Keith, purchased the property in 2020 and has made it a popular destination with events and festivals taking place almost every weekend. Well, when obviously when he, when he started the, the shopping and specifically always Christmas, uh, the retail was very strong. Now today retail is a whole different ball game. Um, malls are empty, people are shopping online. So what our vision here was to, uh, obviously we have a great property, uh, to let families come here, decompress uh, on the weekends, have a lot of fun, a lot of children's entertainment, a lot of adult entertainment. And, uh, and the evolution's been positive for us. My team and I are quite proud of uh, what we've done and uh, obviously we're coming into our busiest season of the, of the year with Halloween and, and holiday coming up so we're, we're really looking forward to it. Next weekend we have Fall Fest which is always a big event for us and it's been a fun project for me and my wife. The staff of Canterbury Village is gearing up for their popular Halloween and Christmas events and although the Sea Pub is currently closed, plans are underway to possibly open the restaurant in 2024. For more information, visit CanterburyVillage.com. You can also find them on Facebook. On September 11, 2001, nearly 3,000 people were killed and more than 6,000 injured in the worst terrorist attacks on U.S. soil in our nation's history. Every year since then, the Lake Orion community comes together to remember the lives lost and honor the first responders who raced towards disaster. On the evening of Monday, September 11th, former Lake Orion Fire Chief Robert Smith emceed an event at the Orion Veterans Memorial on the 22nd anniversary of the tragic event that took place in New York City, Washington, D.C., and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Those in attendance prayed for our first responders and sang along with songs like God Bless the USA and Where Were You When the World Stopped Turning by Alan Jackson. The keynote speaker was retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel and Oxford resident Cynthia Wright, who was with President Bush when he learned of tragic events of 9-11.
a few things that I remember from that day on Air Force One. I guess the first when people ask me about what I remember about that day is that I thought everybody was so professional on the plane. Everybody I thought was even keel. They were professional. They weren't freaking out. They weren't losing it. Um, people were focused on their mission. The second was just the fog of war. It was amazing how much false information was out there in the, in the kind of the communication issues. And just the third is just how things so quickly can turn. Um, you know, I got on the plane in Sarasota, Florida. It was sunny and I was anxious to get home because I had the day off to landing in Barksdale Air Force Base and it looked like we were at war. I know there are many, many stories out there that need to be told and shared about 9-11. We all have our stories. So I thank you for letting me share mine. My hope was that in sharing my day, you brought up memories for you about that day and what you experienced, about the horrors that we saw, about the heroism that we witnessed. Those are all things that we need to remember, and we need to pass it on those, to those that don't remember. You can watch the ceremony in its entirety right here on OWN TV or watch it on demand at OrientOwnTV.org or on YouTube. The first day of fall lands on Saturday, September 23rd, but that doesn't mean people can't get a head start on Halloween. Here in Lake Orion, residents take part in a fun tradition that sort of acts as the unofficial start of the spooky season. On the evening of Saturday, September 16th, a small army of the Walking Dead gathered at Ed's Broadway gift and costume for the 10th anniversary of the zombie walk. The event began as a birthday celebration of Lloyd Coe and evolved into a fundraiser for the Light at Christmas Parade. After checking in, participants could have zombie makeup applied and then at 8 p.m., the group began their parade through the downtown area. First year we started, my wife asked me what I wanted to do on my birthday, and so um, we had got the idea of doing a zombie walk from one of our suppliers in another state. And so I told her, well, let's do a, let's do a zombie walk and see if we can raise some money for, you know, whoever. And then we decided, well, let's raise it for the parade group, and that's kind of how it, how it all started. Participants made their way to Fork and Pint for drink specials and appetizers and a few other locations before coming to an end at the American Legion. Money was raised through a registration fee as well as a poker run and 50-50 raffle. So it's, you know, some, some years it's really, really good and we've got a ton of people and then there's zombies and then other years it's okay. So, you know, it just, it's a fun time. It's a good, it's a good party and we raise money for the parade group. Again, the event acts as a fundraiser for the annual Light at Christmas Parade, which is scheduled to take place on Saturday, December 2nd at 6 p.m. in downtown McOrion. Galling Butte GMC kicked off the 2023 car cruise season back in May with five events planned over the summer. Unfortunately, rain forced the cancellation of several events, but perfect weather allowed their September cruise to go on as planned. On the morning of Saturday, September 16th, approximately 80 cruisers gathered on the grounds of Galling Butte Gym C in Orion Township for the dealership's annual Super Cruise. Attendees enjoyed music courtesy of Rock and Ronnie, and a food truck kept the cruisers fed. Each Galling Cruise benefits a local charitable organization, and the Super Cruise was no exception. Money raised through raffles and donations benefited the Orion Veterans Memorial. Well, you know, you can't say enough about what Guiling has done and is doing for veterans. And I guess all the car people, too, inviting them to this car show, and he treats everybody really good. Well, the VFW is down here, is here today to help support the memorial. And also we have our tent up here, and we'll see what we can do to reach out to veterans that we're trying to have them just join the VFW. Because year-round, we are looking for new members, this is for any, any of the services, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or even Space Force, that have served overseas, they're eligible to be in the VFW. And through their support, we go out and do things like this in the community, 
And like Bob says, we can't say much about what Gowling does for the community. We want to support the community. We're, we're a community-based business. I mean, from John Cooper, who came from Ohio, where he came from a small town, and that's what he did. That's what he did there. That's what his dad did down there with his dad's dealership. Mr. Gowling is all for it. Michael and Matthew support all these things. And uh, we want to help the community out. We want to make this a great community, which it is, but we want to make it great. Now, normally, the Super Cruise would be Gollin's final car cruise of the season, but since weather forced the cancellation of the Kids and Cops Cruise in July, that event has been rescheduled to Sunday, October 1st. The streets of downtown Lake Orion will be close to traffic, and the car show will raise funds for the police department's Kids and Cops program, as well as Shop with a Hero. We hope to see you there. Lake Orion started off the 2023 varsity football season with a 54-33 win over Livonia Stevenson at the Battle at the Book House on August 24th, then improved to 2-0 with a convincing win at Harper Woods 28-6 the following week. They hosted their home opener against Oxford and reclaimed the double O trophy following a 38-14 victory. Could they keep the win streak alive against the favorite West Bloomfield Lakers? ONTV's Joe Johnson has the exciting highlights. On the evening of Friday, September 15th, the 3-0 Lake Orion Dragons hosted the 3-0 West Bluefield Lakers in an OAA Red Division matchup. Let's jump to the second quarter. With the score tied at three apiece, the Lakers have a first and 10 on the Dragons 32. With quarterback Requez Nance in shotgun, he takes the snap and launches it into the end zone. Dragon Andrew Parker seems positioned to make the interception, but somehow it falls onto the chest of Elisha Durham for the touchdown. Unbelievable. The Justin Ward extra point was good, and the Lakers are on top and free. With the second quarter winding down, the Dragons are on the Lakers 22 with quarterback T.R. Hill in shotgun. He sidearms it to Billy Roberson, who makes a nice cut and bowls over defenders on his way to the end zone. The Hoffman is good, and the Dragons tie things up and 10. With 3.40 left in the third, Lakers kicker Justin Ward makes good on a 29-yard field goal to regain the lead. Let's go to the fourth. The Lakers are forced to punt, and the Dragons begin a drive on their own 42 with 5.30 left in the ball game. The Dragons methodically move the ball down the field and facing a third and three on the Lakers' six with 1.24 remaining, T.R. Hill throws a bullet to Jamari Cooper for the score. Following the PAT, the Dragons take the lead, 17-13. West Bloomfield had one last chance to march down the field needing a touchdown, but the Dragons' defense came up big. The final, 17-13, Lake Orion. Dragons head coach Chris Bell gave us his thoughts on this huge victory. So, Coach, what did you think of the game tonight? Jeez almighty. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you what, you can't, with those guys, you can't relax and I think hit zeros. Yeah. And uh, I'm just so proud of my guys. You know, it's, it, we knew it was going to be a four-quarter game. We didn't give up any big plays. We just kept fighting. I think we wore them down at the end. Huge character drive there at the end. We're talking about the growing up party. How about Jamari beating yeah, the Division yeah. One corner there in the slant for the Absolutely. touchdown. Yeah. TR threw a great ball, and so I'm just so proud of our guys. We were just talking about it. Is yeah, You came in for the score to go ahead, but then you trusted your defense to get it done, and they came through. Defense played outstanding. Ricky and the guys, the coaching staff, had a great plan. But those guys played. They played so hard. Kept, kept pressure on the quarterback. The secondary was oh, – there's some tremendous talent on the, on the other side. And those guys have been – been. I mean, they've been catching deep balls all season long. So, we, for the most part, we kept them in front of us all the time, made plays, and, and I just couldn't be happier. With the win, the Dragons are the only undefeated team in the OAA red. The Dragons play their third home game in a row when the 1-3 and three Stony Creek Cougars Come to town on Friday, September 22nd. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. from Dragon Stadium. This is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. Things were no less exciting when bocce ball players from all over North America traveled to Orion Township for a huge tournament. On Thursday, September 7th, Palazzo de Bocce in Orion Township kicked off the third annual ABC Open Championship Tournament. 250 players from the U.S. and Canada formed 60 teams in gold and silver divisions, with gameplay taking place Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. 
The tournament was organized by the American Bocce Company out of Chicago. American Bocce Company is an organization dedicated to building the sport of bocce here in the country, giving it more opportunities, creating a, a national fervor and circuit for the sport. We've had the World Championships here, we've had the U.S. Championships here. This tournament brings on a different attitude. There's more energy for this type of tournament, uh, this type of program that we have now. Uh, you can feel the enthusiasm here. The enthusiasm is, is, is unbelievable, and that brings excitement, you know? It brings uh, a, a, you know, a lot of people to the facility as well, too. The teams competed over three days for medals and prize money, with $5,000 going to the first place team in the gold division and $2,500 to the second place team. Oakland County was one of the tournament's proud sponsors. Uh, we are so excited. This is, brings great economic revenue to the area and all the hotels are full. Um, these are great contributors to our economy. We love the event. The, the, the management of this event, the owners of this facility are first rate. Yeah, I mean, I, I love this. this is, I've been coming here since I was uh, a child to, to play, to go on dates. Um, I, the, the thing that I really love is this is such a novelty still. It's not basketball, it's not football. This and our curling rink down in the southern end of our county, I think, are really great assets uh, to provide a niche sport community, a, a glowing jewel, um, and, and a real attraction to come into our community. Yeah. As the tournament wound down on Saturday, Team Glutes Incorporated faced Highwood Bocce in the Gold Division Finals. Both teams are from the Chicago area and things got pretty intense. With a score 14-9, Team Glutes needed two points to claim the title. Here's how it played out. expected to be here. We made we made runners up last year in this division and it was against a, the greatest, you know, yeah. one of the best players in the world. So we were geared towards winning this gold final and we made it back and did it. I heard you yell during one of your shots. I've been here before. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I get really amped up. I have a lot of emotions. So when somebody tests me, I'm going to come back and yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Who made that final shot? <laughs> what was going through your head on that last shot? You had one point, needed two to yeah. win. What was going through your head? Get the next one and get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was tired, his back hurt. My back's been hurting all weekend. Uh, and I just wanted to do it for these guys, so that's it. What can you say about this beautiful venue and what was the tournament like? The tournament was very well run, super fun. It brings so many great people from all around the country. And um, I would say that it's, you know, lots of smiles, lots of good bocce ball, great competition. Um, and then, you know, everyone's hanging out and having fun afterwards too. And, but the facility is beautiful. We all love it. I love playing here. Um, and I can't wait to come back next year. Yeah. Organizers and players had nothing but praise for Palazzo de Bocce, which is open to the public when not hosting tournaments. Well, first and foremost was the facility. Um, this is one of the best bocce facilities in, in the world. Not just the country, not just the Midwest, but the entire world. Uh, ten courts uh, at competition size and this level of upkeep and maintenance is, is a rarity and allows us to do a lot with a tournament. So our best facility in Chicagoland has four courts and it's a wonderful club, Highwood Bocce Club, but it's four courts. You can do a lot more with ten. That's what brought us here and then once we started building a relationship with the Batavias um, and all the folks here, Jason and everyone that works here, um, we wanted to stay and, and keep building. All type of events here. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they pass by, we're a big building, and they think maybe private club, or uh, but we're open to the public for our regular dining, lunch, dining, we have leagues here, events, we do all kinds of events. You could have a 150 person event, you could have a 10 person event. We have all, we cater to all different types of groups here. And it's a great thing because, uh, as you mentioned, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's an easy game to learn and it's fun to play. Plans are already underway for the fourth annual U.S. Open as well as the first International Open planned for May. For more information, you can call 248-371-9987 or visit palazzodebacci.com. 
And finally, the excitement continued during a rather unusual competition that pitted Lake Orion against Oxford. On the afternoon of Saturday, September 9th, Detroit Wing Company hosted their first ever wing eating contest in the shopping plaza located on South Lapeer Road near Drainer. A team of five representing Oxford Police and Fire went up against a team made up mostly of Lake Orion High School football players. Each contestant was given 25 jumbo wings smothered in buffalo sauce. Well, sure. the count of three. One, two, three, go. Go, boys! Go! Go! go. A little bit of middle, middle of the road, a little bit on the hot side. It's our buffalo. We're not uh, really hot on our buffalo like other companies. It's more of right in the middle of our sauce palette. The first team to finish off 125 wings earned a donation to their charity of choice. It was practically a photo finish as a final member of the Oxford team swallowed the last bite just seconds before the final member of the Lake Orion team. Their chosen charity was the Tate Muir Foundation's 42 Strong. What possessed you to enter this contest today? Uh, well, we said it's going to be for charity, free wings, figured why not, and we won. <laughs> Describe the experience of taking part in this. Uh, it was fun, uh, exciting, definitely in the beginning seeing it who uh, showed up and a little uh, good camar camaraderie with the other guys, the other team, and just, yeah, it was just a fun experience overall, I would say. Detroit Wing Company also had a raffle for a chance to win a year's supply of wings. The winner happened to be a member of the Oxford team. Keegan, Albert. Yeah, Keegan. Just opened up at end of January, right before uh, the Super Bowl, which was great. It's a good opening week, um, and we're just you know going into this year's football season. It's a franchise uh, through Detroit Wing Company, based out of East Point, and um, yeah, things are going well. For more information, visit DetroitWingCO.com slash location slash Oxford or call 248-301-2812. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.